Hi, good morning to all of you. It's a really big pleasure being here. In the first place, I would like to thank Federico and all his team for organizing this magnificent event, this fantastic event. Uh, well, we are from uh, Guatemala. I am personally from Spain, Santiago is from Guatemala, but uh, we work at the Universidad Francisco Marroquín, uh, which is based in Guatemala. And this year, uh, Guatemala is celebrating uh, it's 200 years of independence. Uh, at, the, in, at the university, we decided to a story and to explore the history of Guatemala. And for this reason, uh, we, write, we wrote this paper. This paper, uh, which is about agricultural development and regulatory capture in Guatemala. Uh, basically, the basic idea of our writing is that the paper describes the privileged regime uh, that the United Fruit Company, UFCO, enjoyed in Guatemala during the first half of the 20th century. Uh, the UFCO was able to capture decision makers, specifically the dictator of Guatemala, Manuel Estrada Cabrera, and the country's main leaders. And uh, they captured the state to design a wall to its measure. Uh, basically, uh, they destroyed free competition, and in some sense, they destroyed uh, civil liberties uh, in Guatemala. What was, or how was our process of research? Well, to develop this analysis, we tried to apply uh, Austrian public choice, following uh, Pete Boetke's methodology and Sam Foriqueda and all the people from George Mason University. And the, the idea is trying to study a historical process from an Austrian public choice perspective. Uh, the paper is structured in three blocks, three parts. In the first part, we describe uh, the Austrian public choice framework. In the second part, we analyze the historical context that gave rise to the government of Manuel Estrada Cabrera, the Guatemalan dictator. and. Uh, Last but not least, we described the UFCO and uh, how the company developed all uh, their actions in Guatemala and in Central America. Uh, who was Manuel Estrada Cabrera, uh, the Guatemalan caudillo uh, who gave all the power to a company? Uh, Manuel Estrada Cabrera was an authoritarian dictator uh, who believes in centralized power. And uh, he wanted to modernize the country. And uh, as an advocate of modernization, uh, for Manuel Estrada Cabrera, modernization meant infrastructure, infrastructure, and infrastructure. Uh, the president uh, was elected in, in 1898. 98 and re-elected three times more uh, until 1916. He was a kind of, I don't know if you know about Latin American history, he was a kind of Porfirio Diaz, uh, like the Mexican dictator. No? Uh, the UFCO, the company, the company which captured the Guatemalan state, was established uh, at the end of the 19th century and uh, was the result of the merge of the Tropical Trading and Transport Company and uh, the Boston Fruit Company. And uh, the company started its operations in Central America and uh, opened a set of relations with all the countries, with Honduras, with Nicaragua, with Guatemala, with El Salvador. But specifically in Guatemala, and based on fiscal and market taxes privilege, the conglomerate brought together four US companies. UFCO, International Railways of Central America, the Great White Fleet, and Electric Bone and Share. Together, 
this conglomerate of companies dominated the Guatemalan economy during the first half of the 20th century, capturing the entire state. And uh, we saw during our research process and uh, a snowball effect because uh, the company was achieving a lot of uh, privilege and a lot of, of political monopolies. In first place, uh, mail transport between Guatemala and the United States, but also all the privilege in the rail industry, and of course, all the privilege about telegraph and other telecommunications in that time. And what were the implications for Guatemala? If we see, if we analyze the case from the dictator perspective, from Manuel Estrada Cabrera perspective, I mean, Guatemala win a lot of things, but from a strategic point of view, the alliance between a politician, as Manuel Estrada Cabrera, and the company, UFCO, reinforce the Guatemalan government's ties with the emerging regional power, I mean, basically, USA. No? From a political perspective, the alliance between the regime and the UFCO deepened Estrada Cabrera's control over the country after his re-election in uh, 1905, 04, sorry. Uh, it's like a win-win game. The company won and also the politician. But the thing is, uh, between both, they capture all the state. And from an economic point of view, the alliance was functional to a regime such as Estrada Cabreras, which was pursuing the modernization and diversification of the Guatemalan productive matrix, as well as new sources of financing following the economic crisis produced by the coffee industry due to the excess of the Brazilian production. But is there a free lunch? The benefits that the investments carried out by the UFCO brought to Guatemala in the short term are undeniable. These benefits were not free since they represented a notable erosion of Guatemalan institutions. The, the company had the opportunity to capture the decision making, the decision makers and also the state. And Guatemala relinquished its freedom of expression and the possibilities to receive new investments from other companies. The UFCO, in conclusion of our paper, captured all the state and uh, designed a Guatemala to its measure, operating under a monopoly regime, thereby limiting the opportunities for many Guatemalan workers and investors, national and international. But more importantly, we think, and we conclude our research, saying that uh, companies like UFCO contribute to the development of a culture of privilege and of a culture of the rejection of competition in Guatemala. And both things are still alive in a country, and uh, they, they serve like a wall to, to achieve prosperity and to achieve development in our country. It's like a cultural and a structural problem came from 19th century and the first years of the 20th century. Thank you so much, and we open to the questions with Santiago. So, questions from your side? Uh, thank you. Maybe just a short question. Um, could you uh, kind of integrate what you said about the historical period and um, this um, dictator, if you want to call it like that, into kind of longer run elements of uh, Latin American or even more specifically a culture in Guatemala that might have favored these kind of developments? Or maybe there were other structures before the 19th century that were actually overthrown. So I just would be interested in the kind of longer term embedment of that. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, Guatemala was um, uh, 
live in um, a conservative government, um, and it was uh, part of the liberal um, party um, to create, as Eduardo said, infrastructure. It was obsessed with infrastructure, and it was a phenomenon that was uh, basically a Central American uh, phenomenon. Um, so when the United States started to uh, build its relations with uh, the in the southern border, um, they found a very open um, um, will to to make business with with the U.S. Um, so, of course, they started as a small company and then started growing and growing and growing. And at some point, um, the land that was owned by uh, by this company, the 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 UFCO, it was a banana company, was bigger than Rhode Island. Um, so it was basically like the, the 51st state um, of the U.S. So it was, um, they have the protection from the U.S. Army. Uh, and it was, as I said, Guatemala, Honduras, uh, Northern Nicaragua. Um, so it was, yeah, it was basically in that moment that uh, we were uh, transitioning from a conservative government to a liberal one. Yeah, well, liberal, not in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a yeah, not in a libertarian sense, but, uh, but it get, it understood as, as a, um, against conservatism. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at the, well, at the beginning, the first two elections, uh, he had uh, the, a, a wide uh, popular support. But for the third and the fourth election, it was completely manipulated. And um, basically, with the help of the US uh, military, um, they even anchored uh, um, 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 a ship, a US uh, marine ship in, in in the in the port that was also owned by the company, uh, you know, just sending a a very smooth message that you know the the dictator should stay in power. So the first two were, but the second uh, two elections were completely manipulated by by the government, the company, with the support of the of the United States. Some other questions. So I would like to ask you then one additional question. So um, if such a company has been established in the recent times, in current environment, what do you think will be the main differences in comparison to the past? If, if it was... Yeah, hypothetical situation when such a company is established now. Right. Well, what, what we always say is this is a very controversial uh, paper in, in not only in Latin America but in the United States uh, because we are criticizing the, you know, the company from the right. This is a topic that is usually criticized from the left. Um, but our, you know, what we say is that uh, we, we do like, of course, and we're, we do are open to foreign investment uh, and we love to have um, you know, more companies. But Again, companies in, in plural, but not in, in singular, as, as it was uh, in the past. So, you know, if, if it would, um, we do have it right now, and, and there are more, uh, but I would, you know, I would um, put an emphasis in the, in the plural of, of companies and not only one company that can take over the, the state. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Last chance Thank for you. any questions. We have five more minutes for questions. So if you have any observations or comments, you're very much welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.